Welcome back to DBX Labs. Today we're going to be looking at two compounds that are often confused due to their similarities in names, but uh, in actuality they're quite different compounds and um, they shouldn't be confused. This one should be renamed and we'll be looking at the synthesis and properties of each. So a little bit of backstory on these compounds. They were both discovered long before a lot of conventional explosives and a lot of uh, primaries used nowadays were ever discovered. Fulminating silver was discovered soon after fulminating gold was discovered, uh, and both of which don't have the fulminate anion in it, but they do explode. And the reason they were called fulminating blank is because they, uh, in, in the time alchemists would refer to exploding things as fulminating, uh, that that thing is fulminating. And um, it kind of messes up everything now because people get it mixed up. But um, silver fulminate was discovered, uh, I believe, in the 1800s. It might have been in the 1700s. But um, it was actually used as a primary, whereas this could not because it's too sensitive. Uh, silver fulminate was used by the Italians um, in artillery. Uh, they were the only army to use silver fulminate for primers, uh, and I mean, uh, look where Italy is now, so that kind of shows you what you get when you're dealing with a um, super sensitive compound and using it as the primer in your ammunition. So silver fulminate is the active ingredient in these poppets. Uh, they're also called bang snaps, and uh, they're, they're a consumer product. Most citizens can buy them at a dollar store somewhere, um, like Walmart. But they um, they are coated, well, they have little tiny rocks inside that are coated in silver fulminate. And when you rub them together or throw them at the ground, they pop. Um, and it doesn't hurt or anything, but there is a... A small detonation that occurs inside the uh, the paper. So these things contain only about 80 micrograms each, which is not a tremendous amount. So you have to keep that in mind if you're making this compound because it's really uh, not something you want to mess with, um, especially on the gram scale. Uh, I've seen people make grams at a time, uh, but I'm I'm never going to do that because it's, I mean, you're, you're working with silver fulminate. It's, it's very easy to set it off. So we'll be sticking with subgram quantities. So unlike fulminating silver, silver fulminate actually has the fulminate anion, which means it's, its name is actually proper. Um, it's correct. Uh, whereas fulminating silver, it's really unknown what exactly it is, whether it's silver azide or silver nitride or a mix of both in some sort of complex. But fulminating silver is something that occurs. Uh, it forms when you uh, let Tollens reagent sit out too long. You're supposed to destroy Tollens reagent after using it uh, to test for aldehydes. But um, if you let it sit out for too long, it will form fulminating silver, which in itself is an explosive. It's a touched explosive, just like a nitrogen triiodide touch powder. And um, it's not something you want to let uh, sit unattended either, because if you let it dry up, it's tremendously sensitive, and it'll do all sorts of things you don't want it to do. There are two main ways to go about making silver fulminate. The first of which I like to call the brute force method, mainly because it uses a runaway nitration as its main source of heating to sustain the reaction and keep it running. The second of which I like a lot more, uh, mainly because it's worked consecutive times for me and it's much more predictable. It uh, just is a sustained heating of the two ingredients, ethanol and silver nitrate that's been acidified by um, nitric acid. 
Here I'll run some tests with the damp product. The compound detonates upon any exposure to open flame. The same can be said about the compound when heated underneath. The brilliance of this compound is quite impressive. Uh, I'd rank it right around how silver nitro tetrazole acts. Unfortunately, it's much more sensitive, so it has little practical use. Shock sensitivity is a resounding high regardless of the material that the fulminate is being tested on. On smooth surfaces, friction sensitivity seems to be little to none. On concrete, however, that's a different story. I ramp things up a bit by putting 150 milligrams of silver fulminate in a uh, in a piece of aluminum foil with a visco fuse and attaching it to a used soda can. Compared to silver nitro tetrazole in the can test, silver fulminate is clearly at max. As one final demo with this compound, I take 100 milligrams of it and put a hunk of copper in with it inside of a, um, a piece of aluminum foil, close it up, and uh, prepare to throw this poppet at the ground. So rather than wait for the Tullens reagent to naturally decompose into fulminating silver, we can also take Tullens reagent and add a couple beads of sodium hydroxide to it to force fulminating silver to form and precipitate out as a black solid. We then carefully pour out the black precipitate onto a piece of filter paper. While damp, the product is only slightly less sensitive than when it's completely dry. This is still extremely sensitive. Note that at this time, the fulminating silver paste likely has more water content than any actual fulminating silver in it. After several failed attempts, I am finally able to place some fulminating silver onto a piece of aluminum foil to test the flame sensitivity. As you might expect, it is extremely high. Although there is no real way to do the can test using this compound due to its extreme sensitivity, I tried to take some of the paste, put it on a piece of paper, and attach it to a aluminum can along with a visco fuse to try to set it off. Unfortunately, this doesn't go as well as I hoped uh, after getting it onto the paper and onto the can as I tried to put on the rubber band, it detonates. But surprisingly, it has little effect on the can. Uh, as a matter of fact, it doesn't even rip the paper in any place. Uh, so that really leads me to think that this is, in fact, mostly silver nitride, not silver azide or uh, other Ni uh, nitrogen dense compounds due to the low gas formation and extremely low brushance. Well guys, that's all for this video. If you like how I put this video together, uh, I did it kind of differently from some of my past videos I uh, with the side-by-side -side 
comparison uh, rather than just focusing on one uh, topic. Um, just like or subscribe. I don't really care if you like the video. That doesn't really do anything for me, but uh, um, if you subscribe, that lets me know that something's working. So uh, see you guys next time.